not guard dogs, <laughs> that's for sure. Just companions, they're wonderful. He has squeaky toys, he really likes squeaky toys. They, they, they love anything that squeaks, so uh, anything that squeaks is in danger of getting taken into the mouth. So he's, they're sight hounds and they really are very quick. He can actually catch a mouse if he sees a mouse running across the floor. He can uh, catch it. So he likes squeaky toys. And um, that's about all that he likes. He doesn't really, he won't fetch a ball or any of the regular do dog activities. Well, he's just a, he's just a, a wonderful creature. And, I, and uh, I think anybody who's knowledgeable about the life of a greyhound before they're adopted really feels like, well, we maybe need to make up for those years spent in a crate with nobody, you know, specific specifically loving you and uh he's just he's a really sweet sweet boy I, mean, I kiss him before I kiss my husband when I come home <laughs> uh I think that they're they're very sensitive and everyone before they get a greyhound thinks that oh if you get a dog you'll have to be running him all the time but I learned very quickly with my first greyhound that I tried to take him for a half an hour walk and basically almost had to carry him home because they just don't have any any stamina. They're trained to run very quickly for quite short periods and then to lie around. So um, so I think that they're, they're misunderstood and uh, they're not a typical dog. I mean, they're not all about barking or being aggressive. They're quite shy. And they're very attached to their owners. And I think that as an owner of a dog that really loves you and, and is attached to you, it feels good. So uh, He likes going for walks. He's learned actually to like the ocean a little bit. He'll go in up to his chest, uh, but that's only after years and years. He loves the beach at low tide in Roberts Creek. We go down there and he, at first we'd take him down there and he would only run in counterclockwise circles, that's what, what at, like at the track. And then as he became more and more acclimatized to uh, this area, he starts to run figure eights and he, he really shows off. He, if you're standing there, he'll, he'll run as close to you as he can to try and make you move. <laughs> so he, he loves the beach, the, the sand is just so nice on their feet. And he likes the, the woods, he likes going for walks in the woods and Cliff Gilker and all the things, and he likes the fact that he can be off the leash here on our property because it's big enough. And I'd heard about the rescue, so started researching it online and uh, found out about the uh, NCGL, checked them out online. Of course, it was only in the market for one dog, and then saw the photographs and was reading the biographies of, of the, the various animals and saw that there were these two being fostered in separate homes, but that in fact they were sisters. So then I started thinking, I thought, well, the old adage, two can live as cheaply as one, <laughs> which is not true when it comes to dogs. Uh, I decided I'd take two of them and they'd be company for each other and it would uh, get them back together. Although at the track, they're, they're from Kansas. I don't know how much time they were actually together in Kansas. But uh, yeah, we went over to the island on, on, the, on the weekend in June and we had gotten there early and we were sitting having a bite of lunch in a restaurant uh, killing time before we were to meet them. And I saw this person going walking past with Jersey. And I said, is that Jersey? That looks like the photograph. And I thought, but she's awfully big <laughs> for a female. So sure enough, that was Jersey. And then Em showed up and they've just been terrific. Uh, we did have to do the usual thing, you know, using the masking tape to put X's on the glass of our front door and on the patio doors because they have a tendency to throw themselves into it. Never having lived in a house before, they're not used to things like glass doors or stairs or smooth floors. So they've had to get used to all that sort of thing. But they settled in very, very quickly, uh, very affectionate. They will stand and get petted for hours. As long as you want to pet them, they'll pet you. And there's a good reason that they're nicknamed 40 mile an hour couch potatoes. They spend most of their day just lying dozing on their beds. They'll go throw a fit of energy every now and then and, and uh, go mad with their squeaky toys, you know, their bunnies and this sort of thing. 
try to disembowel them, but uh, for the most time they're pretty calm and quiet. Very friendly with everybody that has come to the house. And with other dogs, fantastic with other dogs. What's it like to take them for a walk? Slow. It, it can be a very slow procedure because we get stopped frequently by people. They're very eye-catching, I think, because they're white and they're large. You don't see that many greyhounds and they're very well behaved on the leash, extremely well behaved. Uh, no problem in that regard. Uh, but we, we make very slow progress. Everybody wants to know their history. Are they rescued? What's the story? And, uh, but it does bring a lot of attention to the breed and to the need for rescue, which is wonderful. You know, anything we can do to spread the word. Oh, there she sees the birds going by. <laughs> so anything we can do to spread the word is great. And, and what has it meant for you personally? Oh, great companionship. Fantastic companionship. Um, they fill the house, and I don't mean by their size alone. They, they're just warm, they're giving, they're generous. Uh, they're such sweet-natured animals, and they're so gentle. Um, I just love them to death. I just love them to death. They're, they're great. And if you're having a bad day, they're there. If you're having a good day, they're there. Just like any dog is, but, uh, you know, they're sort of almost like a skinny, gentle giant, <laughs> these guys. If you think a greyhound is for you, or you want more information, feel free to call Len and Judy at 604-885-7140.